If you've interacted with a computer ever in your entire life, then you understand that troubleshooting is just a fact of life. Using a computer, whether it's on stage, in the studio, or even just working in an office, you understand things are gonna go wrong. And you have to understand how to troubleshoot. Hey everybody, this is Will, and in this video, we're gonna talk about just that, troubleshooting. But here's our goal. We wanna share some common tips and tricks and things that you should look at. They're gonna help you find out what's going wrong and how to fix it as quickly as possible. So, let's get to it. So let's start with what I think is maybe the most important tip out of all of these, particularly if you are on stage, performing on stage and something goes wrong, I think this is the most important thing. And that is just to simply stop and breathe, calm down, pause for just a moment before you go about trying to find and solve and fix the problem. Uh, we get in these moments where something goes wrong and we suddenly start to panic and we've got to hurry. We've, we've got to, you know, the show starts in two minutes. We've got to figure this out that it's not helpful to go from panic to trying to troubleshoot because you're not gonna be able to troubleshoot well. Your mind is not going to be clear. So what you need to do in that moment when something goes wrong is just, again, just to simply stop, just breathe for a moment, calm down, do whatever you've gotta do uh, just to focus. Um, it's not helpful to head into troubleshooting while panicked and it's worth taking 10 seconds, maybe even a minute, sometimes maybe even longer than that. Uh, if you're in your studio and there's no press, pressing time, you're not pushing up against a, a show start or doors opening, um, it's worth taking just a couple minutes or get up from the situation you're in, go walk around, take a deep breath, um, and you're gonna save time in the long run by doing that. Now, you may also find yourself in a situation, which I have multiple times before, where something goes wrong and you've got tons of people surrounding you, looking over your shoulder, offering their input, trying to be helpful and offer their advice. It's simply not a helpful thing. If you are in an environment where you have the authority, you have the leverage, you have the relationship to say, hey, do me a favor. Let me troubleshoot this. You guys walk away. I'll give you updates and let you know how things are going. You're going to solve the problem way faster than if you let everyone stay around your shoulder and bark commands and bark suggestions at you. So I would say calm down. If you can send people away if possible. The other piece of this that I think is always interesting is when things go wrong, our brain jumps to the most complicated, convoluted, convoluted solution possible, right? The cause of all these issues is that I need to reinstall the OS on my computer. It's corrupted. I, I've worked with people that don't do well in high pressure environments and their solution to every problem is to unplug all the cables at once, right? Maybe you've worked with someone like that. Maybe you are someone like that. That's okay. You'll learn. You just got to pause and you'll probably get better. But jumping to the most complicated um, cause or thinking the most complicated cause is not helpful because then it leads us to very complicated solutions like reinstalling the firmware on your device, reinstalling OS on your computer. Now, before you jump to that scenario and that case, I want to walk you through a couple really simple things that we should check, some specific things to iConnectivity uh, interfaces as well. They're going to help us find the solution to our problem even faster. So let's talk about those. So the next thing to check is power. At a very basic level, and I know this is going to sound simple, but when you're in a high pressure environment, it's really easy to miss this. Check that your interface, your computer is plugged in. So if I'm looking at the Mio XM, I see that there should be lights on the front of this. There's not. So that means my power cable is likely loose or my power got turned off. And so I'm going to plug that in and make sure that works. There we go. We see lights, so we know we're good. So again, that's a very basic level, but again, in a high pressure situation and environment, it's really easy to miss something simple like that. But even more than that, and this next thing is, is probably the most common issue we see with people using iConnectivity interfaces, is make sure that you have the correct power adapter. Now, depending on the interface that you're using, uh, depends on the type of power adapter you use. And again, like I mentioned, this is one of the most common issues we see with people. They take a, a power adapter that's meant for a guitar pedal or an adaptable power adapter that they bought at an electronic store and try to use it with the interface. And by doing that, and by not use, using the correct power adapter, 
uh, from the factory that that provides the correct amount of power, uh, you're risking a couple of different things. One, your interface is likely not going to get enough power. So you may even uh, find situations where things aren't functioning properly and maybe even to the point where your audio out of your interface is distorted because it simply does not have enough power to operate. Um, the other thing is it can actually damage your interface. If you use the incorrect uh, power adapter, there's a chance that your interface could be damaged by that. So you want to make sure you're using the correct power adapter. Now, for a device like like the Mio XM, the XL, the Audio 4C, the MIDI 4 Plus, um, you're going to want to use a 12 volt, 36 watt power supply. And again, the, the most important thing I think here is to use the power supply that was provided with your interface. That's going to be the one um, that you know is going to work, that's going to provide enough power, and you know that it's not going to, in the end, damage your interface. Now, if you're using something like the Play Audio 12, the Mio 10, the Mio 4, those all use ICP 9 volt. Uh, 18 watt power supplies. And again, super important on these to use the factory supplied power adapters um, because you know they're going to provide enough enough power and they're going to be uh, the correct adapter for your interface. Now, a final tip here that I want to share, if you have a lot of iConnectV interfaces, if you have a lot of gear that uses a lot of different um, adapters and you're never sure because they're all black, they all look the same, um, something that I learned a long time ago is even at a very basic level, just label this. One, put your name on it, put what interface this goes to so that you can find it. It's also a good uh, reason and opportunity to buy a label maker. I know nothing sounds more fun to a musician than going to an office supply store and buying a label maker, but that could come uh, really, really uh, come in really, really handy when you're trying to use the correct power adapter. So again, make sure you're using the correct power adapter for your interface, because if not, it's not going to get enough power. It may not function properly and may even in the end end up damaging your interface. <laughs> Okay, the next thing we want to check are our connections. Now, in particular, let's start by talking about Ethernet. So if you've got a interface like the Mio XM that is RTP capable, uh, we want to check our connections. Make sure our Ethernet cable has been plugged in and is nice and snug. Uh, you want to check for the lights on the front that show you're both sending and receiving data. Uh, if those are not lighting up and the cable's plugged in, then check the other end of the cable. It means the other end of the cable is likely not plugged in or something's not working. Uh, you want to check on your computer to see if Oracle for X series is recognizing your interface, you want to see that you have an IP address um, in your MIDI network settings. And if you don't see that in Network Studio, uh, you don't see your IP address, your interface is not able to be seen by other uh, devices on the network, uh, then you know it's likely something with your cable there. Uh, in fact, we have a whole entire video to help you troubleshoot issues with RTP MIDI that does not require an IT certification to understand and to figure out. Um, so we'll link that in the description of this video uh, if you're trying to troubleshoot that. But again, check those cables, make sure they're snug, and look for those lights on the front of the interface. The other thing uh, that we want to check and look at, obviously, are USB connections. This is probably the most important kind of main connection from uh, our interface to our computer. Unless we're doing just MIDI and using Ethernet, USB is going to be essential. And I have to say, this is one of the most common issues and most common failures uh, um, which is a bad USB cable. So if you plug in your USB cable to your interface, you plug in the other side to uh, your computer and your computer's not recognizing your interface. Well, I'm gonna walk back through, I'm gonna check power. Does my interface look powered up? Yes, it looks powered up. I'm gonna check the connection here. That feels snug, that feels tight, uh, but my computer's still not seeing it. I'm gonna guess odds are really high that it's this cable. So that's the reason we always suggest having backup spare cables. Uh, Ethernet, USB, quarter inch, XLR, whatever you need, but make sure you have backup. So in case one of your cables goes bad, you can really quickly swap it and try it out for another cable. In fact, one of the things we suggest is if you can, if at all possible, buy different cables from different manufacturers, um, different, uh, different places. So that if you happen to have a bad batch of one cable, you can go to the other one and, and be pretty confident that you're not getting uh, and pulling from the same bad batch. Now, another thing you could do 
uh, if you're maybe a little more technically inclined, you have a voltage meter, is you could check to make sure there's not a continuity issue with your cable. So you can use your voltage meter uh, at both ends and measure to make sure that you basically are, are reading the same value on both ends, to, which will show you that there's no grounding issue. And so if you do that and something's wrong, toss that cable and use one of your backup cables there. Um, it's important to note that even though you bought a brand new cable and maybe an, an expensive USB cable, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. So always have spares, always have backups. Uh, now, another trick that I used often is if I'm, for instance, using a USB MIDI controller uh, and I press play on that and I'm using it with my Mio XM and it's not working, uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of go through process of elimination. I'm gonna think through my signal path and I'm going to figure out where in my signal path is, is that break happening. So for instance, if I'm looking at my Mio XM and uh, as I trigger my MIDI controller, one of these lights lights up here, that means that the connection from my MIDI controller to my USB host port here is working, right? This interface is receiving it. Now, if I've got my ethernet cable here and I'm going from this cable uh, to another interface and that other interface is not receiving it, then that means that there's uh, an issue between this interface and the other interface. And that likely means there's an issue somewhere with routing. Uh, I didn't create my RTP connection properly. Um, maybe there's an issue between that cable, but by using the process of elimination and thinking through signal flow, it's allowing me to go, okay, where is it working? Where is it not working? Now let's see if we can eliminate it. Now, those are a couple simple things that we can check. Power, check our connections. I, I, I have to say, I think most likely that's probably solved it for you. But if it hasn't yet, there's a couple more steps we can take and a couple more things we can check. And let's talk about those next. <laughs> Okay, so even after that, if you're still having issues, you should consider restarting your machine. In fact, to quote your favorite IT professional, have you restarted your machine yet? This is something any conversation we have, we're on the phone uh, with someone trying to solve an issue, they're always gonna ask us to restart a machine. And this is a really helpful thing because it kind of zeroes things out. It clears the cobweb so uh, we can restart. And a lot of times just simply doing that fixes it. So consider restarting, rebooting your machine and see if that fixes your problems. Now, if that still doesn't fix your problems, then consider rebooting and restarting your interface. Now, if you're near your interface, this is super simple to do. We can just take our power cable, pull our power cable out, and it's going to restart our interface and obviously plug it back in. Now, what do you do though if you're not near your interface? What if your interface is racked up, it's side of stage, you're on stage, you don't have access to it directly? Well, this is one of my favorite reasons to use um, Oracle for X series in a live setting. So I've got my interface connected to my computer. You can see right here, I'm using just an ethernet cable to make this happen. I've got Oracle for X series opened up on my computer. I'm gonna click this I button and the I button is gonna tell me a little bit of information about my device. But here's one of my favorite features of this screen. If you look in the bottom right hand corner here, we have a reboot device button and I can click that and that's going to remotely, well, it's gonna prompt me. I'll hit yes. And then it's gonna remotely restart my interface. I don't have to be near it. I don't have to plug the power cable. I don't have to try to reach inside of a rack to restart things. I can remotely reboot it and restart it from Oracle for X series. And again, a lot of times restarting your machine, restarting your interface might quickly fix your problem. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we want to look at doing is deleting all references to our interface in MIDI Studio on Mac. So if you're having issues with your interface, you've checked everything else, you've tried everything else, and you're still having issues, uh, it may be worth deleting the reference to your specific interface or all your interfaces in your MIDI Studio. Um, MIDI Studio is a place where it stores information about all MIDI devices that were ever connected to your computer. Uh, and so it's fact, uh, there's a chance it may store some older information there that you want to clear out uh, maybe after a firmware update you want to clear that out and restart from scratch let's walk through the steps of how to do that i should mention too before we do that if you're unsure whether this is something you should do you've never done it before uh, and you're uncomfortable reach out to iConnectivity support and they'll let you know whether it's worth doing this uh, or not so first thing we want to do is pull power on our interface so we'll do that uh, very simple. Next thing we want to do is close out our doll. Uh, essentially, we want to make sure that anything that could read MIDI or reference MIDI is closed on our computer uh, so uh, that we can start fresh. Now on our computer, and again, this is uh, the setup for a Mac, I'm going to search using Spotlight for audio MIDI setup. Um, and if you don't see this window pop up by default, go to window here 
and um, let's do show MIDI studio. This is what we're looking for. So what you can see here are these individual references to interfaces. In a couple of different scenarios, you see two different ones, maybe a, a loader, for instance, for the Play Audio 12, and then we see our actual interface here. Now, if you feel comfortable or confident, you can do Command A to select all of these and uh, hit Delete to delete all of these. Um, if you're unsure if you need to do that or not, or don't want to chance it, you can click on an individual device and hit the minus button here to delete that if you want to. Another thing you definitely want to check and be aware of um, is if you have any specific routings that you've saved for your interface, like this one. I did some specific routings with my Audio 4 Plus. Um, I want to get rid of that, so um, I'm going to click on that and hit delete or hit minus to get rid of those and to clear those out of my mini studio. <laughs> Okay, the next thing you should check is your project file. So uh, there's a chance that your project file has gotten corrupted. I've seen this happen a lot with people that go to build a, a set for live performance and as their set gets bigger and bigger, uh, something happens, they load in a file that's incompatible or something and their set does not work. So if your, um, your project in your doll is not working, uh, then go back to a previous version and see if that works. If it does, but that version doesn't work, uh, that updated file doesn't work, then you know it's something with the file and not the interface. Take the project, if it's not working on your computer, move it to another computer, does it work? Well, then you know it's something with that particular setup. For example, if you're using uh, the, the Play Audio 12, and let's say computer A is working, but computer B isn't working, then move the project file from computer A um, to the other computer and see if it works. Um, if that doesn't work, then try swapping cables and see does the problem follow the cable or does the problem follow the project? And if it does, then you know it's the project. If it follows the cable then you know it's the particular cable and you can swap that so doing that little bit of investigative work checking to see if it's an issue with your project and if it's corrupt uh, it, again it's going to help you figure out the solution even faster <laughs> Okay, so as a last resort, if you've tried everything else and nothing seems to be working, you could consider doing a factory restore to reset your interface back to how it came to you from the factory. And that means it's gonna remove all your configurations, all your custom routing. Uh, and so you wanna make sure if you're gonna do this, write those down, export a file so you know what those look like uh, because you're gonna lose them if you reset your device. Now, if you're unsure if this is something you should do, proceed cautiously proceed carefully. If you're unsure, contact iConnectivity support and they'll let you know if this is something yes you should do or not. This is something I do often as long as I'm not prepping for a show or if I have plenty of time. If I'm trying to do something with MIDI routing configuration and I feel like I've uh, worked myself into a corner and I can't back myself out of it and I'm having issues, I'll just wipe the device and start over fresh. And it's just a good helpful reset for my brain. Let me show you how to do this. So I've got my interface connected to my computer computer via ethernet. I've opened Oracle for X series. I'm going to click the I icon up here. I'm going to click factory reset. It's going to very appropriately warn me. Are you sure this will erase all settings and reboot the device? Again, as a reminder, write down those settings, make sure you've got them saved somewhere. So you know what you did if you want to know what those are and then click yes. And that's going to reboot and reset your device. Again, this is a last resort. This is something you should uh, consider doing if you've tried everything else. And if you're unsure, or you're kind of afraid of doing this, contact support before you go ahead. All right, so to wrap up, in general, if you're having audio issues, check your power and make sure it's the right power adapter. Check your cables, all your connections to make sure that everything's working correctly. Um, also consider checking your project. If you're using Ableton Live, make sure uh, your project is working. If it worked on a previous project, but not this one, it's possible it became corrupted. So try going back to that other one and seeing if you can restore it. Check your buffer settings, see if you need to raise that, change that. And then finally, and this may sound weird, uh, consider uh, deleting those uh, references to your interface in MIDI Studio because that can in fact have some issues uh, with audio. Even though it doesn't seem like it should, uh, we've seen some scenarios where that could happen. Now, if you're having issues with MIDI, again, check your cables, uh, both power and all your cables between interfaces and interfaces connected to devices. Uh, check your RTP settings, make sure your connections are working, they have IP addresses. And again, as a reminder, we've got a full video 
um, showing you how to troubleshoot, even if you're not an IT pro, to help you quickly get to a solution. And then finally, again, consider resetting um, uh, and deleting all those references to your interface in MIDI Studio. In general, I, I think it's really important to understand um, you're going to have problems, right? Murphy is going to show up. Murphy's Law is going to, uh, is a true thing and it's going to happen. If something can go wrong, it will. So the best thing you could do is have a plan, have backup cables, uh, have a plan. If something goes wrong, you're going to switch to this backup interface or, hey, we're going to pause for a little bit, have a backup plan. Uh, but I hope that with um, these tips that we discussed in this video, when something does go wrong and it will, that you're prepared and you can really quickly find the issue and fix the issue. Thanks so much for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.